Okay, let's get started. First of all, what is an angle? Well, an angle is simply, in a very loose sense, an amount of turning. For example, if I were to turn one full turn, right, I'll do it, here goes, one full turn, I've just turned through an angle of one full turn. I can actually turn through an angle of two full turns by doing a double spin. I'll do it, why not? One full turn followed by a second one makes for an angle of two full turns. Now, of course, you don't have to do a whole number of turns. You can do fractional turning as well. For example, I could just turn half a turn. Let me turn through an angle of half a turn. Zoom, and then you get to see my back. All right. Do another angle of half a turn. I'm back to where you are. But I'm actually getting quite dizzy right now. So rather than turn my body, let's actually turn an object. In fact, in this course, let's push pencils around. Or for me, since I've got a screen here, I'll push markers around. Let's apply some turning to different markers. For example, I was just holding that marker that direction right there. So let me mark that direction. There it is. Let me apply, say, quarter of a turn to that marker. Let me go, say, that direction. I'll go either way, but I'll go this direction. And a quarter of a turn, I think, is about there. So I would say that is about a quarter of a turn. If I did a good picture, you could actually start this side and go the other direction and still say that's a quarter of a turn. So whether you go clockwise or counterclockwise, it's all fine. Same amount of turning. Though, some mathematicians will say, let's consider one direction positive turning and the other direction negative turning. So we can do that later on, but for now, it doesn't matter which way we go, that's quarter of a turn, that's also quarter of a turn. In fact, you can see on the board we've got all sorts of turns here. It looks like this one here is about one-sixth of a turn, would you guess? One sixth of a turn. Uh, what's this one? Oh, this one is our two full turns. You can see it went whoa, like, like probably going off the screen, but one full turn followed by a second full turn. Oh, not very exciting. It's kind of a strange picture because after two full turns, the marker's back to where it started. In fact, in fact, let me do that. Uh, let me draw it here. If I start the marker here, there is a picture of zero full turns. Yeah? Start, doesn't do anything, just there it is. If I apply one full turn, it, it, turn to it, then I get same picture. That's it. If I apply two full turns to it, like up here, I get the same picture. But if I look at this picture right here, it's pretty simple and therefore it's confusing because this actually represents no turning, one full turn, two full turns, three full turns. Very strange picture. So pictures can be a little delicate. For example, if I did half a turn like I did earlier, so I start the marker this direction, say, and I apply half a turn to it, zoom, it's like me facing the other direction. You saw my back when I did half a turn. The mark is now facing this direction. I get a very flat picture like this. And that's half a turn. All right, grand. And this is a picture of, I don't know, one full turn, two full turns. Maybe I should mark it like that or something if I want one full turn. All right, brilliant. So here are some angles. Uh, here's a big angle. Looks like it's almost three quarters of a turn. This one looks like it's about a sixth of a turn again. Maybe it's a fifth of a turn. Beautiful. All right, but actually, look at these pictures. Because I'm talking about turning and an amount of turning. That's a very intuitive idea in my head and it makes good sense to me. I, I feel what a turn is. In fact, I really felt what a turn was. But if you look at a geometry book, they might just say an angle is something much simpler than that. They'll just say, look at the pictures on the board right now. And they say, we shall define in this course simply to be two lines or two rays or two line segments emanating from a common vertex, common point. So they call a point like this a vertex. And they say, look at that picture in pink, that is an angle. Okay, no mention of turning, that's an angle. Okay, clearly, clearly you want to think turning when you see a picture of two lines coming from a common point. So this is meant to represent turning in our brains for our intuition, but the actual definition in books is just draw two lines coming from a common point, that's an angle. But there is a point, point of confusion here. When I look at this picture here, I actually see two different angles. Actually, I can see more than two different angles could be a part of that picture. Do you see it too? When I see a picture like that, just cold, no, no writing, no context, I say, okay, does the author want me to think this amount of turning, the small angle? Or does the author want me to think of the big angle? Do you see there's a big angle there? I could turn this way. So there's two angles this picture could represent, two amounts of turning. Or if I get a little bit crazy, maybe it means one full turn plus a little bit more, that angle. Or maybe it means two full turns plus a little bit more to get that angle. So actually this picture represents an infinitude of different amounts of turning. All right, so here's what happens. 
If an author says nothing more, says here's my angle, the social convention is to assume the author is referring to the smallest possible angle, smallest possible amount of turning that picture could represent. So it'd be the small amount of turning there. If he or she meant, no, 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 I meant the big angle, the big outer one here, then they would have to say that to you. Write it down in the text, say it to you out loud, do something to indicate they meant the outer one. Kind of like I did here. All right, so that's it. An angle is just gonna be represented by two lines, like I've been doing, coming from a common point. And voila, we will assume we're always to have the smaller angle unless told otherwise. Great, but the intuition is it's always an amount of turning. And for us, it's going to be the amount of turning of a pencil, or in my case, a marker. All right, that's the setup, that's the setup. Now we're ready to actually do some geometry. In fact, here goes, here's a very famous theorem in geometry. It's about two lines, I'll just draw two lines that happen to cross each other. Beautiful. So again, that crossing point is probably called a crossing point or an intersection point, or sometimes in geometry books, they'll follow this language and call it a vertex. Now, in this picture, I see quite a number of angles. I see four amounts of turning here, but I'm gonna focus on the one to this side and the one to that side. So there's two different angles on either side of that vertex. Now, here's language. Language gets very strange. People call these vertical angles. Now vertical normally means like up straight down as in like not horizontal. So the word vertical seems very strange right there, but actually it's really the word vertex made into an adjective. So I should be calling these vertexical angles, which just sounds silly. So people don't say vertexical, they just say vertical. They just mean either side of the vertex. So this is a pair of vertical angles. Some people might call them vertical opposite angles, just to be very clear. They're opposite angles about a vertex. Now, of course, there's another pair of vertical angles, these ones, which actually happen to be vertical, but they're either side of the vertex. All right, so that's the setup. Two lines crossing at a point, that point's called a vertex. Here's a pair of vertex angles, vertical angles. Great. The theorem in, in geometry is that this angle here, this amount of turning, what the market does, is actually the same amount of turning as this angle. These two angles are actually the same amount of turning. And I'm gonna prove that theorem. It might seem like intuitively right. Good, because my marker says it's right as well. I'm gonna show you how my marker proves that vertical angle theorem in geometry. Here goes. What I'm gonna do is use my marker and apply this amount of turning to it and see what happens to the marker. For example, it starts here, starting the marker there, apply this amount of turning, zoom, bingo. And the marker ended up there. So got that. If I apply the right angle to the marker, I get this amount of turning. Starting position, ending position. All right, now I wanna apply this amount of turning to the marker and see it gives me the same amount of turning. And how am I gonna do that? I do wanna start at the same place so I can compare the pictures. So what I'm gonna do is actually, okay, all right, marker's here, it's got nothing to do with this angle right now, but let me slide the marker backwards. That's not changing its direction. I think that's okay. Now let me apply this amount of turning to the marker. Zoom. That marker's now undergone that amount of turning. And then let me just slide the marker back along the line. It's not changing its direction. And look, the marker is in the same place as what happened over here. It started here, zoom, 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 and ended there. Just like this, this angle started here and ended there. Applying this amount of turning to the marker, it gives the same result as applying that amount of turning to the marker. Therefore, these two angles measure the same amount of turning. These two angles are the same. We have just proved the vertical angle theorem. I know it's a little result, but it got us going to start showing the power of a pencil. So we're gonna do pencil pushing to prove ex exciting things in geometry. Lots of great stuff to explore. So let's keep going. See you next lesson.